Thank you. Excited to be here again. I see some familiar faces and names. <laughs> Great. So Brittany is from uh, the Keller Williams Philadelphia office. And Brittany, can you tell us a little bit about your background, how long you've been in real estate? Um, and then we'll, we'll just kind of roll from there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll touch on a little bit of it. And I prepared a little nifty uh, presentation. Um, so I'll touch on it briefly. But I've been in business for going on four years now. Um, I started as a solo agent. My first year, I sold $7 million. Um, second year, we doubled. I hired my first admin. Um, third year, I partnered up with Britt McLaughlin. Um, she is the yin to my yang. Her name is Brittany as well. So our running joke is you get two Brits for the price of one. Um, and we, we sold $30 min million in, in volume last year. Um, so we're doing big things. We're a team of four now. Um, definitely interesting times upon us, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, but it's been, it's been more humbling and it's been just such a great opportunity for improvement um, and communication just amongst everybody, including our own market center. Um, so a lot of cool things going on right now and uh, I'm excited to hear what's going on with you guys. Great. All right, well, let's roll with it. Um, you wanna pull up your presentation here? Yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna share my screen. Might take a minute, I don't know. It would be lovely if it just like easily shared, but of course not. Okay, can you guys see it yet? Not yet. There we go. Okay, cool. Great. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties, but I got it. So I'll present this to you and then I'm going to hop out and I'll probably end up showing you um, a few of the, the social platforms just because the purpose of this is to just pretty much delve into one of our tools in our toolboxes for lead generation and business development. Um, social media has absolutely been um, one of the key things in our overall like brand development, brand awareness, client contact, client growth, sphere growth, marketing help, um, all that fun stuff and I'll delve into all of it. Um, so I would love to understand like who's here today. Um, I can't really see hands. Um, so if people want to speak up and um, say I or something, um, but I would love to know like who's actively sharing social media um, or using social media in their business today. I do. Um, my name is John and I act as a marketing director for the Dave Hook team. We are currently a team of about 15. And uh, last year, I think we did about 60 million. Oh, wow. What would you say, um, percentage wise, how much of that business came from uh, social media efforts? Um, social media, I don't, probably not, not much. Um, <laughs> but as far as our sphere and our database, I would say about 65%. That's huge. And that in itself is is worthwhile right the the time and effort um so apologies zoom calls i like to keep them interactive as possible because if i spend all day talking i'm sure that we can probably put each other to sleep but would love to like keep it as interactive as possible so with that said too um if anybody has any questions or wants to share a story um please i more than encourage you um, so just today's agenda, um, I'll talk about our team briefly. I kind of just ran through that. Um, some social media strategies that we have, some niche marketing, um, community creating, content creating, and overall consistency and how much I can stress. Like that is the most important thing that you can do when you're marketing in general, be it on social media or not. And, you know, from sales to anything that it is that you're doing, um, just consistency is absolute key. Um, so she moves Philly. That's me and my business partner, Britt. Um, we're a $30 million team located at KW Philadelphia. Um, if you guys haven't come visit us yet, please do so. We're a really awesome city, a lot of awesome food, coffee shops, um, and our market center is great. There's a lot of good energy there. 
Uh, we're a team of four agents. We have one executive admin and one transaction coordinator. Um, we're one of the top 100 teams in the KW greater Philadelphia region. Uh, last year, we ended up um, number one for units and volume sold. And all of our business is organic. And that's another cool thing that we'll touch on too, is kind of how to organically grow your pipeline um, and grow your overall sphere of influence. Uh, we rarely do any paid advertising. And I think that's a really important thing to note now more than ever, especially um, while we're you know, in a pandemic and a shift more or less, um, is really how to grow um, your reach and your following and in turn some business development and some leads um, organically. And we'll touch on some of that. Um, Cause you just, I mean, it goes without saying, but keeping your business lean during these times is really super important. Um, overall, 30% of our business comes from social media. So it was a pretty cool stat. Um, our mantra is that we sell hospitality, not just homes. Um, our content marketing and social strategies help us communicate that. So through, um, I'll show you guys like our social media. I don't know if anybody follows us currently, but you'll see um, we really do a good job of humanizing our brand. We don't only talk about real estate. We talk about real estate and beyond. So we share some of our favorite restaurants and our favorite coffee shops and pictures of our dog and our day to day. Um, Instagram, for example, I'll talk about Instagram a lot because it's probably the, the, um, the primary platform that we use and we use most actively. And I'll, I'll tell you about the other platforms that we use. But Instagram is like one of our biggest platforms because it's the easiest, um, the easiest platform that allows us to kind of share a lens into our business daily, um, which resonates with a lot of people. It creates conversation, um, it raises questions, and more importantly, it cultivates relationships, all of which turn physical at some point, um, oftentimes. So, um, this is Instagram. Again, uh, we have a follower count of just about 9,500. Um, and I don't say that to brag, but I say that because the number doesn't actually matter. Um, I've been growing our social media following since, you know, inception of business. But even before that, um, I guess I cheated when we first got started. I was blogging beforehand as just like a healthy living blogger. So um, food, fitness, and living well were like my three things that I did and I shared consistently. I guess we pivoted when I went into real estate and now it's just uh, food, real estate and living well. So we definitely changed the um, overall content that we share, but overall we didn't change the quality. Um, so we've probably grown about 50%, if not more, since I went into real estate. Um, the people definitely dropped off, but we gained the more quality and loyal followers who are around for this career. Um, so I don't know if anybody has a personal account and a business account or just kind of blends them into one, but that's what we definitely do as a team. Um, it's a blessing and a curse sometimes, but I'll go into a little bit more like how I went from just like kind of sharing my own stuff to turning ours into a full blown team Instagram handle and how we developed that into Facebook and all that fun stuff. Um, but overall, just the, the overall following and volume of people that are on your social handles, it just doesn't matter. Just keep focused on the quality of people, um, the quality of content, and you'll be just good to go. Um, again, more or less what I already said, um, quality absolutely overrides quantity. Um, when you have consistent, authentic, and genuine content, the rest pretty much takes care of itself. Um, so, you know, we, for example, share pictures of our dogs. Um, people love dogs, that's something that like will never, be denied and stop being loved within like anybody's community. People love animals, people love kids. We all have kids. Um, sharing stuff like that kind of, again, just humanizes the overall um, content that you're sharing and the overall brand that you're creating. So social media strategies, um, definitely pick a platform or two. There are a plethora of platforms out there. Again, quality over quantity, but also burnout. Um, if you're waking up every day and you're trying to create your overall real, est real estate um, social media plan for the day, if you have to touch on like five overall um, platforms, it could be exhausting. And sharing the same content across the board kind of becomes 
mundane to some, um, at least in my opinion. So if you can pick a platform or two, uh, for us, it's Facebook and Instagram. And of course we do a moves letter as well. Um, I know that some people I met previously when I was visiting the market center, um, I did share the moves letter and some of you signed up. So if you still follow it, great, you see what we're doing. Um, but if not, we do a, a, it's a weekly moves letter, but we do two, um, letters per week. So we do one on Monday and Friday. Overall, it's pretty much just a summary of what we're sharing on social media, maybe some recipes that we made over the weekend, some open houses that we hosted, some open houses coming up this week. Obviously, open houses we can't do right now, so we're sharing them virtually. Um, but overall, pick a platform or two. We use three. Um, the third platform is MailChimp. Um, I don't know if anybody uses that currently, but it's great for overall email newsletters. And a cool thing too, a little plug for Command and KW, um, is that MailChimp integrates with uh, Command right now. So I don't know if you can actually do it just yet. I don't know if they rolled out the feature and activated it, but I do know eventually that's one of their intentions. So they'll, they'll be able to make uh, Command our overall dashboard for all of our social media and um, newsletter platforms. So overall, just be strategic, um, have purposeful messaging. Um, and be educational. You know, some people have like one to two sensors. That's great. Um, but overall, like people look for, I don't want to say profound all the time because that's not overall like everybody's intention. But I think like just having effective, purposeful messaging, um, you want to educate people too. So on our social media, we're not only sharing like new restaurants that we're eating at or, um, you know, we share the the client marketing or client events that we have. Um, we're educational as well. So I'll show you actually one of the videos that wow. she made uh, yesterday. Her name is Monica and she did a really cool kind of COVID Q and A and it was, we called it Monica's Minute and um, people responded really well to it. People love seeing faces. They love talking. Again, it humanizes things. And now more than ever, we're just craving that human connection. So social media will allow you to do that. Um, but be educational in the time um, of need, especially, but overall within your profession. So um, that's one of the ways to be strategic. And then, of course, be authentic and be human. I cannot stress that enough. Um, the same way that sometimes people can smell sales from like a, a few miles away, um, people can also sense when you're being inauthentic and just being a little pushy or like just doing something that's not true to your nature. So one thing I always like to, to share is just be yourself when it comes to social media too. You can always have this like super robust social media strategy and plan, but just don't lose sight of like who you are and who your brand is at its core. Um, Cause that's really important. Does anybody have any questions so far? It's really hard for me to see um, the overall like question screen if there's any rolling in. So Nate, if you want to, send them or just jump in as they like come that would be great otherwise i just can't see them while my screen is being shared <laughs> cool um so getting into a little toolbox um command is actually one of the the tools that we will be able to use with social media planning and content creation um, I don't know if you guys have toggled around in it just yet, but it actually has some pretty cool stuff. Um, we schedule some of our posts in there now. Um, it allows us to analyze some of the data that's going out there, like what time the um, post was shared versus like how many people did it reach and what kind of response and engagement did it get. Um, for those of you who like data like me, um, it is really cool. Um, and a cool thing to check out. Um, post scheduling, um, I like to use uh, Planoly. I don't know if anybody has heard of that, but if you feel flustered and maybe you have you know, clients all during the day, you don't know when you're gonna be able to post something on your Facebook or on your Twitter, you can absolutely use a platform like Planoly. Um, it is free for the basic plan, um, but it allows you to schedule some posts in advance. So if you have a hard time getting some social media scheduled during the day, just set aside maybe like, I don't know, a half hour and come up with your content, um, all, plug it all in on Planoly and you can schedule it for like the next week or something to that effect. Um, and then Planoly has like a really cool like grid feature that you can like overall like see what your grid looks like. And this is again, just like specifically talking about Instagram. Um, 
that you can just play around with a little bit and just come up with like how it's going to look. Um, Canva, that's actually the platform that I'm using right now with this presentation. Um, Canva is our right hand man when it comes to um, just some infographics and overall like templates that we use for um, maybe open house flyers and stuff like that. Um, we do come up with a lot of graphics around open houses and around just sold and just listed that we both post across Facebook, um, Instagram, we do Twitter on occasion too. Um, but Canva is a great resource if you haven't already used it for content creation and overall like animation. Um, and then Buffer. Um, Buffer is similar to Planoly. Uh, Buffer is great for social media management, again, post scheduling, um, stuff like that. So if your biggest concern is like, I don't have time to curate social media, um, there are free tools and resources like Planoly and Buffer that allow you to um, just still stay on your lead gen and still stay on your appointments while still maintaining an overall social media account. Hey, for, cats and kittens. There was a question here. Um, do you utilize designs at all compared to Canva? Um, so I did play around with designs a little bit and I didn't find that designs had um, the ability to do what we needed with like fonts and branding. Um, I'll show you like our specific branding plan that we have. Like we have specific fonts and colors that we use. Um, and we did find that command doesn't have that just yet, um, but we know it's getting there. And also um, one cool thing about command is like over at KWR, they're super receptive to feedback. So we ran into that problem. We gave them the feedback and they did say that that's something that they're working on implementing. Um, so if anybody else runs into issues with like command that they want to see that they maybe use right now that they can't on there, but you know, their intention is to do so definitely give that feedback because they'll put it in their their hopper to start working on. Is that it? Yep. Okay, cool. So I'll go back and I'll start playing that video because I didn't realize it like plays right away. But this is going to be the video that Monica made yesterday and it's Monica's Minute. And it's like, it got a lot of good responses yesterday. We've been pushing her and asking her to make this video because she is just great in front of the camera, number one. But number two, she just always has the most silly stories when it comes to home buying and selling, mostly home buying. She's a, a buyer's agent. Um, and I said, Monica, you have to come up with a little Monica's Corner because these are so relatable. These are so like, because you know, as a, a realtor, there's only so much that we could do up front to like prepare our buyers and sellers. So we get out the basics, and then after that, it's just like you know, we're gonna pivot and come up with things on our own and solutions and stuff like that. But um, she ended up making a Monica's minute yesterday, just in re in response to a lot of the COVID nineteen questions. But I'm sharing it with you because it was really effective. It got a lot of feedback and responses and overall engagement, and I think it did a great job of her sharing her own brand of like Monica Moose Philly, right? Uh, within our brand of She Moves Philly. So check it out. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. This is Monica with She Moves Philly. And today on A Minute with Monica, I'm gonna go over the cans and the can'ts of real estate right now during COVID-19. So you can't do any showings, but you can still put in offers on homes. We can actually make the offer contingent upon walkthrough of the home once the closure has been lifted. You can't do open houses, but you can do a virtual tour. Those are basically the new norm right now and allows you to explore a new home while staying inside healthy and safe. You can't meet with a realtor face to face right now, but you can meet with them virtually for buyer consults, listing appointments, and any other real estate related questions. So thanks everyone for listening to A Minute with Monica. I hope this was informative and helpful. If you have any questions, just DM me. Stay safe. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys liked that as much as we did. Um, she just played into some current events, right? Yeah. Of, um, uh, Tiger King. I don't know if anybody else is watching that, but you know, hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it gets a giggle out. Um, it creates like a very relatable and also humor like post. You like it, right? Yeah. Um, while still being informative, it's short and sweet and to the point. I can't stress like clarity, brevity, and specificity are so key nowadays because we all have like, you know, squirrel brain and we have like a few minute, if not less, um, attention span. So you want to definitely get in, get out, but be effective um, with, and efficient with your time. So I think that she did a great job with that. Um, she only used like super basic editing software. She used, I think, um, 
just something on Apple. I'm not entirely sure what she used, but I know that she used just, just super basic stuff. Um, so it makes it really quick. I think it's iMovie actually that she used. Um, so anyway, you could just use an iPhone. That's all she used. She uploaded it to her computer and she edited it from there and did like a few little things, but you don't even need to do that. She definitely used a little bit of the spare time that she has now to edit it. But if you just get a video up on there, um, it creates again, engagement, relationships and overall just conversation which i think is really important because somewhere in there when you start creating conversation on social media on instagram on facebook on twitter wherever it is digitally um there's going to be an opportunity for somebody to say like hey i have real estate needs right they're going to come out in some way shape or form and that's when you're able to capitalize on them and engage yeah a quick question so yeah. have you done any sort of comparison between you know your responses from video versus graphic content to verbiage? Yeah, so overall, like our graphic content, not graphic content, content, but I know what you mean. Um, I, you know what I mean. <laughs> the graphic content, oh, I was like thinking about that for a second. Yeah, um, explicit. <laughs> it, it, um, we're pretty clean on social media. Um, it, our, our photos definitely have a lot more engagement. Um, for some reason, like our videos just don't have such great reach, which is ironic because generally like videos do have a greater reach than over right. photos, which is very interesting. Um, I, we see that on Facebook, our videos have a greater reach, um, but we do find like it is like a pretty special counterbalance of like time that you post and like day that you post. So something to keep in mind too. Um, if you have uh, an Instagram or a Facebook business page, both have to be businesses, you do have access to analytics that will tell you like what time your um, followers are on and engaging. So something to keep in mind there too. Um, but overall, like video is usually more superior, but for us, it's just not the case. Cause I think it's just, we don't do it all that often. Um, I'll be honest, like I'm not a big video person. Um, contrary to popular belief. So it's like photos are for me, um, but they are generally for like the rest of the population. So be fun, okay. you get fun, get creative and have fun when you're doing things. Mm -hmm. um, and then just another thing to, to focus on, like similar to neighborhood farming, like definitely find your niche. And I think like, um, again, I see a lot of familiar names and faces here. Um, so thanks for coming back again. But when I taught my navigating your first year in real estate class, I talked about niche marketing. Um, that carries over into social media platforms as well. Um, just continue marketing to your target demographic. Um, you can use hashtags and look up, you know, hashtag first time home buyer and, or like look up the hashtag of your city or the town that you're farming in, or, you know, dogs that you like or coffee shops that you like going to or something like that. Like I'm naming all these things cause these are all within like my own personal brand and niche. Um, but sorry, I don't know what that was. Um, working from home problems. Um, but anyway, like niche farming is super important to do both, you know, in person and on social media um, because it's just gonna get you closer to the people that you wholeheartedly wanna connect with. And in turn, just like grow that following. I know that I said quantity isn't as important as quality and I still, that still holds true. But there is something to be said about somebody who has like, an organic number of followers, like, you know, 10,000 or something you're turned to and looked at as like an authority of sorts, um, which is like pretty cool, but you also still don't need that like number of following to be um, authoritative, again, in a very gentle way, um, but more in a professional way. Um, so just things to consider. Um, so community creating is what one thing that we we really pride ourselves in in doing well. Um, we create our community on the social media um, from Instagram to Facebook. We share creative but also cohesive content, all of which like pretty much circles around the same stuff. Like if you scroll on our Instagram account, um, I'll actually pop out of here so I could show you our, our Instagram and stop talking and start some showing too. Um, a lot of, can you guys see that? Okay, cool. Um, a lot of our, this is Instagram and I'll show you Facebook, but a lot of our stuff is very consistent and cohesive. Like here's Monica's Minute, 
we have a listing photo that got a lot of attention and interaction. Um, we are in quarantine right now, so we're doing virtual set in settlements, but one of our clients found Britt McLaughlin, my business partner, her photo and took a photo with the keys because we usually do like happy settlement posts. So we kind of like trained our clients to know that we love settlement photos and we thought it was awesome that she ran over to the photo and took one for herself. Um, we love food. We do a lot of fun infographics like, you know, here in Philadelphia, you have two kinds of people as a running joke. You know, I won't go east abroad. I won't go west abroad. It's a very like star contrast, which is hilarious. Um, and people love that too. So just like switching things up and getting creative um, from wine to food showing um just our different team members and the time that we share together donuts just again things that like our overall community likes um we share pretty consistently again client settlement posts um our our clients just kind of grow to know who we are what we share and in turn like they'll start sharing with us things that they think we might like stuff like that uh, which we think is awesome and turns into a community more or less so um this photo right here is like one of my favorites uh we sh shared a client appreciation party um this past october we did an Oktoberfest, and we brought in the grinch um we brought in the grinch because we thought it would be hilarious number one two we thought it would be respectful and observing of all um um cultures and religions um, we wanted to do something for our clients that during the holidays we didn't just send them like a card from you know, she moves Philly with faces, uh, pictures of our faces. We ended up getting the Grinch so that we can take a picture with them at our Oktoberfest and in turn send it to them during the holidays with them and their family. So it wasn't like a Santa Claus or it wasn't a menorah or something like that. Um, and everybody had a lot of fun. But one cool thing about doing that was one, you created more community, like the bond and the energy that night was great. Um, again, this all cultivated physically. A lot of these clients I've met online, these are one of them. Um, but two, it was kind of like a cool crowdsourcing for um, just content. So like our clients took this photo, they put it online. Um, we had our photographer take this photo, like we put it online, stuff like that. So like when you're hosting events offline too, be cognizant of what you're doing, where you're hosting and stuff like that. Um, we definitely operate like millennials and we think about what kind of Instagrammable or like shareable content or we get or things at our events are we going to have because in turn like we're able to get our clients to kind of snap a picture and share it on social media for us which allows us to in turn interact with them and share their content and it just again creates that like robust community and interactive community so just some things that we've done in the past. Um, this was our overall She Moves Philly um, rebrand relaunch event when I partnered with Britt McLaughlin. Uh, this was pretty much the after party. We had a pretty big turnout and it was a lot of fun and people shared photos. And again, it just like goes back to our overall like purpose on social media is to create a community um, and overall just place for people to feel comfortable in. Um, so events, um, I just touched on that. Hire a photographer because it's a great opportunity for you to get some really good photos and things to share across your social media. So I know that one thing people wonder and have most concern around is, um, you know, I have no content to share. And that's okay, um, but you can do things creatively to get content, whether it's just you going out for a stroll and finding like a really cool like I've found recently just I took my dog for a walk and I found like a little library box right you could share that in like your community that was like at a park um, you can have client events you could share photos of you and clients after a settlement you can share pic pictures of your coffee everybody loves coffee um, so you can create content in really special ways but one of our favorites is to like have events we probably do one um, about each quarter, if not slightly more, slightly less. I mean, this year it's gonna be slightly less, um, but hire a photographer because you'll really have some good quality stuff to share just like consistently because you usually get like about 100 plus photos from that. Um, and then crowdsourcing, like I just said, um, you know, we have a, a photographer running around for like our events. Um, you can also crowdsource as well. Um, just have clients do it for you, uh, whether you're doing shout outs on social media saying like, hey, you know, 
I'm doing yoga today. How are you moving your body, right? During quarantine, like trying to make an effort to remain physically active. Um, crowdsourcing is one of the things that you can do to ensure that you're not only creating your own content, but other people are creating it for you, tagging you and interacting with you as well. Um, it just has a compounding effect that is really helpful and advantageous in the long run. Um, and then overall, just the bottom line is whatever you do, just do it consistently. Um, use it or lose it is my motto too. Um, you know, there's Pinterest, there's again, Twitter. Now there's um, not Twitch, but there's, oh my God, I'm totally blanking on it. Everybody is making videos on it and I cannot, cannot remember the name of it to save my life. If somebody has it, drop it in the comments. TikTok. Um, TikTok, thank you. Um, I'm not using it right now, but I am following a lot of the content that's being generated, but like other realtors are using it as well. Um, there's no right or wrong platform to use, but I think like the most important thing to learn, um, and this is like, if the, anybody's going to take away one thing from this, it's just to be consistent and like choose the two or three platforms that you're going to use. Um, Cause if you don't use it and you don't use it consistently, like listen, nothing happens overnight. Um, but you do have to use it steadily um, and just keep posting in order to actually grow something. Um, I always say it's not a marathon. I mean, not, not a sprint. It's absolutely a marathon. Um, Cause you're really going to learn like, where do you want to be? And you're going to self-evaluate and see like, where are your clients and who's engaging where and what like serves me best, but also serves our team best and stuff like that. Um, so select your top three accounts um, and then just go from there and just use it steadily. Um, if you need help with, again, scheduling, use the third party applications. Otherwise, just use your Google Calendar. You can come up with a content schedule. Um, we talk about time blocking and time management all the time. Um, you know, just make a window before your lead generation for the day, right? We talk about nine to 11. Maybe you put it in there at 8.30 and you do like 20 minutes of social media um, lead generation or social sharing and engaging. I promise you, you'll see like a significant ROI by doing that alone. Um, and then just be cohesive. Having a brand is um, pretty important. It helps people remember, remember you, and more importantly, keep you at the top of their mind. So I'll share with you guys too, something else that we have. Um, so we did work with uh, branding and marketing. Uh, it was one of our girlfriends who actually worked with another real estate team. She offered to help us out and she did a phenomenal job of rebuilding the She Moves Philly brand. Um, before I brought Brit on and we had um, our business partnership, Everything that I did with She Moves Philly was pretty just like bubblegum and duct tape on my own, which wasn't terrible, but it was nice to have like a professional third party come in and help us just do a complete refresh and rebrand. And I do not share this to say like you need to have a professional help you or you have to have this like hefty high end brand brand because it's not even what we are. Um, but having just being cognizant of an actual brand and like again, cohesiveness and like maybe colors that you're using and different trends that you're following, like just try to follow some kind of pattern because I that I promise you will help you and help your clients in turn really just like remember who you are and ultimately stand out. So we do have like a plan. Um, I'm more than happy to share this with somebody um, or those who may want to check it out. Um, I'm going to jump to like email newsletters. Again, this is something that we do. Uh, we use MailChimp and MailChimp. We have about like 5,000 subscribers. We send our Monday moves letter. And again, that's a digest of like pretty much our social media um, content that we've shared through the week, whether it's, you know, something that Mayor Kenny said or something Tom Wolf, you know, this week he rolled out another restriction. So just trying to like stay on top of the news for our clients and keep making it digestible and approachable. Um, we'll share like recipes that we made and shared on the, um, Instagram or Facebook will share um, an event that we attended. We're not attending any right now. So maybe sharing, you know, a, a virtual um, yoga event that we attended. Um, we always do standing coffee hours with our clients. So we usually have that at the bottom of our newsletter as well. Um, this month we'll be doing Zoom calls with um, another um, women-owned empowerment group called She Steps Up. So we'll be sharing that in our newsletter this week. Um, but we're really consistent with it. And that in itself helps us compound our social efforts because we tie in our Instagram to our newsletter and to our Facebook. And in turn, like it kind of just grows the pot. 
Um, so if you're going to do it, I highly recommend doing a newsletter because you can cross reference not only your um, social media efforts or your, you know, just other efforts that you're doing within your business, but you can also share your listings and stuff like that in there as well. So serves a lot of purpose. Um, individual outreach is what we do with our clients as well. Um, overall, um, social media is really going to help you with your contact database base growth. Um, for me as a rule of thumb, like I don't, if I engage with somebody new on social media, um, I don't ask for their, their contact information right away. It's usually like, you know, you can be a little bit intuitive with it, um, and go as you see fit, but usually like within the first like seven exchanges, if they express a real estate need, then I'll end up like asking them for their email address or contact information. Um, one thing that I do from social media in order to convert people into my database and into potential clients is just asking them to coffee. Um, coffee is a super approachable thing. Um, and oftentimes you can learn a lot about a person by doing that. So right now we've been doing virtual coffees and virtual consults, but when we go back to, to normal, um, Social media is like a good way for us to just continue cultivating relationships, but overall just growing our database. Um, we do our blog. So if you go on shemoosefilly.com, you'll see that we do blog. Um, we haven't been doing any the past two months just because business has been bombarded with just a bunch of stuff. Um, and I'm still doing all of the blog. We don't have a third party who does that. Um, but overall, blogging is an excellent way to kind of connect all of your social dots and redirect traffic from maybe your Instagram to your website and vice versa, but more importantly to like grow your SEO presence. So like I'm not an SEO expert, but I do know like if you're using the, the um, particular words that you want to be known for, like maybe your niche words or first time home buyer or, you know, tax abatement are some like ones that we we've focused on, um, you can really grow your overall like Google return and Google search return by simply blogging. And that's like a free tool that you can do. It just, again, takes time and energy, but the, the ROI on that alone is great too. A lot of our searches have been coming up at the top of Google. And that's because like we spend a lot of time on school catchments and just like particular words that are within our niche. Uh, social media, already went through that. Um, publicity, we don't really do too much with that anymore. Um, never really we have, um, unless we have like a new construction development, we don't really reach out and do any PR. Um, but that's just one thing that we can touch on too, is like if you have, um, you know, new listings and new construction developments, obviously social media platforms are so huge and people love to see all of their stuff on there. So just definitely make an effort. Um, we usually cross brand um, with local restaurants and stuff nearby our new construction developments. I'm kind of going on a tangent right now, but it is kind of relevant. Um, for example, we have a new construction development at the 20 home construction development in Kensington coming up. Um, and what we did was we called one of the, the nearby bar restaurants that we love to go to called Martha. Uh, we had a, a, a ground uh, groundbreaking happy hour there and we invited both buyers and agents alike and we ended up just having like a happy hour evening for to celebrate groundbreaking and we had one of our lenders come in and help us offset some of the costs um, but right there was one great opportunity to market a lot of our I mean our development to capture new content so we had a photographer there again we had some video going we had you know a huge like we did a, a drone video for our construction site so we had that reeling like on the, the screen there um but it wowed both clients and um agents alike because it just showed like our efforts that were we're making towards both um social media and also just like physical marketing um but the two go hand in hand and they are absolutely in tandem um and in turn like they just have like a lasting effect and it's just stuff that you can talk about and utilize for future marketing appointments continue sharing on social media stuff like that so um but that's pretty much it um as far as the overall like marketing plan goes i'm more than happy to share it with you guys should you like to see it um again you don't need to have a professional to help you there but just have a precise plan when it comes to social media um, content creating and stuff like that. So 
Um, some additional resources I did want to share that like I've always grown loyal to over the years. I don't use them so much anymore. Um, but a few were uh, Rachel Hollis, Boss Babe, and Marie Ferrello. Um, for all of my women uh, realtors out there and men alike, these females are powerhouses and they also give some great content um, and resources for, you know, growing your social following and just overall, like, what does a brand look like? Um, follow to fan society. Sorry, I can't really see that without going back into my my presentation on Canva. Uh, Follow to Fan Society, another great like realtor specific um, online program that one of my buddies at my market center uses. Um, so check that out. They are free, some are not. So disclaimer there. Uh, Hootsuite is really great for just learning kind of the mechanics of social media. If somebody wanted to learn um, more or less like just how to go about it beyond what we've shared today. Um, it gets a little bit more specific as to, again, like good times to share a newsletter, like what is the most active time that people are available, things like that. So check out Hootsuite. There's a lot of just old school and new, new school stuff to apply um, to your business. And then each social media platform in itself, like there's a ton of resources. If you just spend time there, like Unfortunately, it's a blessing and a curse because you could really fall down like the social media rabbit hole for hours. Um, and next thing you know, it's like 10 o'clock, but spend some time on there um, following some people that you might admire, maybe some other realtors that you admire and stuff that they're doing. Like you don't need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to this stuff. So like check out some stuff that's available. Um, people like uh, Rachel Hollis, they're also on social media and you can do some of the things that they're actively doing just like by studying like hashtags that they use and different like colors that they use and stuff like that. So each social media platform, there's a plethora of resources out there. You just gotta look for them, but these are a few that I would highly recommend starting with. Um, Cause overall social media is a tool for creativity, communication, community, business development, marketing, and beyond. And I think in summary, like that's mostly what I touched on today. Um, so if you guys have any more questions, um, I'd love to discuss them now. Cause I'm just about done. Um, I've got like two more slides left. I think I saw another comment, but I could be imagining that. Yeah, so it looks like uh, if you could share the link to the plan in the chat box. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll absolutely do that Like before we um, part today. I'll do that. Um, overall, like when you make just calculated or just mindful efforts on social media, I don't even want to say calculated. I just want to say mindful, be, say mindful because you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this. Like, I just know that I'm not, right? I think it's just consistency is king and so is content. And just when you do those two things, you have just such a profound and increased reach when it comes to social media and just overall like growing your database because you're going to have increased engagement, you know, liking, tagging, commenting. Um, it sounds like super easy and that's because it really is. Um, but the busier that you get, the less likely that you're going to do it. So just be mindful like where you're spending their, your time and just making sure that you're actually doing it. Um, increased influence, you know, you become the authority when you, when you are sharing just relatable, but also knowledgeable things within your, your field. Um, so be mindful of the, the content that you're sharing there. Um, increased sphere of influence. Uh, we talk about that definitely with Keller Williams. Um, you know, you have your physical sphere of influence, but you can have a digital sphere of influence too, which again will compound your overall following and in turn your, your increased clients. Um, again, about 40% of our business comes from social media alone, uh, which we think is really freaking cool. Um, and then overall, it's just in increased conversion um, and repeat business too. A lot of our, like, it's really hard to maintain contact with your clients every single day, right? But Instagram allows you to do that and it's pretty cool. So a lot of our clients end up becoming friends. I might say about like 80 to 85% of them remain in touch after settlement. And I think that's why we were able to do the volume that we were able to do so quickly is because we remain at the top of mind. We share engaging content um, and we also, um, stay in touch with our previous clients. So we work on a lot of referral business, um, but we remain top of mind and social media allows us to do that just because so many people are on online nowadays. Um, so it's important to, to be there and live there. Um, 
So that's why we spend so much time there. Because uh, social media for us, it's, I love this quote, so I wanted to share it. Um, social media is about sociology and psychology more than it is technology. And that is the honest truth, at least in my opinion. Um, social media is an outlet and it's a resource for people, absolutely. Like they turn to social media for guidance on things. Um, so for us, it's, you know, our place to share wisdom and, you know, experiences around real estate, but also it's our opportunity to connect with people and do so like more on a spiritual level. I don't care as hippie as that sounds, but there's a lot of relationships that can be developed, a lot of compassion that can be shared. And I think that's important, especially now more than ever during this pandemic. Um, so social media, we're, we're mostly leveraging for that. And, you know, again, you don't have to be a technological guru to be good at this. Um, it's just doing it with a little bit of heart. And I think that's the most important thing to note too. Um, so overall, um, that's me. That's our team. Um, I hope that some of those tidbits were, were helpful. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to open it up to just kind of discuss. Yeah, let, let me go ahead. I'm going to unmute everybody. Um, or if you have a question, just raise your hand um, so we can kind of roll through some. I'm going to stop screen sharing if that's okay. All right. Go ahead. Anybody got questions? I hear birds. Crickets. I hear crickets. <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally okay, too. Okay. Um, I guess my only my question too. I mean, you touched a little bit on command. So, what out of command? I mean, obviously, are you using towards? a lot of your social media stuff in regards to campaigns? Are you tagging things in like your contact database based on where they're coming from? All that kind of stuff. Yep, so tagging has been like a super huge thing for us. It's the most tedious thing in the world, but it's super important. Um, we have been tagging everybody from tenants to buyers to sellers to bought to renter to landlord to, you know, invite to um, mailer, right? So like all of these tags, um, especially now, cause we just sent out a lot of mailers and we're sending out, um, some invites for things or we have sent out invites for things in the past. Um, but tagging your clients is so important because whether you're doing a digital mailer or a physical mailer, um, it allows you to just kind of weed out a lot of people and summarize like who you need to get in touch with and in a very quick and efficient way. Um, excuse me. But beyond that, uh, we're using a lot of their just scheduling features right now. We haven't gotten into some of the sophisticated stuff only because like it's not just quite there yet. Um, we love to to lo love to hate and love to love command right now, um, just because it's very much in its beta phase. But there are a lot of awesome features in there right now um, that do allow us to like one schedule things. Like we are creating like we did our just listed and just solds in there. Um, but for now, that's pretty much the way that we're using it. We're just kind of using it in a very um, basic way, but it is effective and that's pretty much all we need it for is just like scheduling things. That's all, so. Great. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so you said about 40% of your, your business comes from social media. Now, is that based on, like, like how is that, how do you, mm -hmm get that business like is that you just organically reaching out to customers or are you paying for ads are your ads going somewhere or your leads going somewhere like what does that look like I think it's like a combination of a few things um like one consistency like going back to that like we've just been sharing a lot of things around real estate like for me I make it a point mentally to share at least one real estate related thing per day to just remind people hey like I'm in real estate, here's your reminder, right? Um, we share open house tours, like me, between me and my business partner and then Monica and our, on our team, like before COVID hit, we were on an appointment at least twice a day, whether it was with a seller or with a buyer. And we would throw that up, like for us, Instagram stories are really effective. Um, so we would throw up like a house tour and here's the house that we're touring or here's the listing appointment that we're on and we'd share it in our story. And in turn, people reach out and say, wow, the house is gorgeous. Like how much are they asking, right? A simple question like that, somebody's like asking you a real estate question and in turn, like you could follow it up with, are you in the market? Or like, what are you looking for? Or can I have your email, I'll send you the listing or send you the photos or more specs. Um, so just like simple like approaches like that 
is how we convert like a simple question to our client, right? Um, and then beyond that, like people got a, super used to our standing coffee hours that we had. So uh, once a month, at the end of every month, we had um, a, a coffee meetup for a half hour. It was more of like, think office hours for like a professor, right? Hey, our door is open and come in, ask whatever you need or come in with whatever you need help with. We hosted it at the same location at the same time, the last day of every month. Um, and people just learned and remembered that we had that. And in turn, if one of their friends, it oftentimes wasn't like the person that we've like physically met with or met at the coffee hour. It was like somebody that they referred it to. So it's like people saw that we were doing it. So like if they didn't go, they would refer it to a friend. And like, again, that compounding thing started to happen. So like, if you did like a standing coffee hour, right? Like, and it, you didn't have people come out for maybe the first three times, like don't give up and lose hope. Um, because eventually like people start remembering like, oh, hey, Joe is doing a standing coffee hour at Bruno's. Like you need to go to that. You just mentioned you wanted to buy a home and have questions. So like, that's kind of the way that we leverage like our online presence, but made it physical at the same time and gave it a physical opportunity. Because for us, like, there, like for me, there's only so much authenticity that you can create on social media. It eventually like that human touch and human connection needs to come through. Um, at least in my world. So um, setting us up for opportunities to meet people in person from the online world uh, was like really what we made efforts at most. And that's how we got in front of people. And that's how we ended up like closing clients, um, if that makes any sense. So to, to, to go a little step further on that. So um... Do you have any plans or anything in your schedule that allows you or that tells you, prompts you to prospect to your social media followers? Um, so as of last week, I did add, um, you know, social media commenting. Um, and that's more so like targeting Instagram um, because I think like beyond just sharing your own stuff, like engagement is super important with like algorithms and stuff with like Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Um, but like, I find us like, like I'm the, the voice and like the person behind all of our social media, well, like our social media accounts, the she moves Philly account. Um, and I'm super passionate about it. And that's why like, I haven't lost steam and like kind of why it came naturally. Um, but I lost touch with like actually engaging with social media and like commenting on people's stuff and really like, catching up and like being a little bit more present um just because i was like up oh, okay i posted all right my job is done for the day now on to the next thing so it's like just reciprocating is really important so i put that into my schedule and started like okay for 15 10 minutes a day i'm gonna spend time commenting on hashtags that are relevant to our brand and also just commenting on our our current like follower and followees or whatever you want to look at it as um just commenting on their stuff as well. So just like reciprocating on social media is really important and I'm doing that now. Um, you especially like I, I've heard and I have seen it be like effective too is like before you post something, make sure that you um, comment on other people's posts before you post something on social media. And then after you post it, comment again, just because it like bolsters the overall like exposure that the post might get. Um, is what I heard from like some other like yeah. online guru that I follow. So maybe that tip will help you guys as well. Um, but that's pretty much the only social media that um, I schedule into my schedule every day. Beyond that, I just like have it ingrained. Like it takes what, 21 days to build a habit. Um, I've just had that habit in me since like five years ago that like we post at least once a day. So it's like, and we go easier on the weekends because a lot of our, our clients aren't like actually online on the weekends. It's more so just like Instagram stories that we do or like one Facebook post. Um, but beyond that, we just post once a day and like we don't have a super sophisticated approach to that either. Great. And last question, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, do you have a preference of business pages over personal page, or do you prefer just a personal page? Um, business page is important, I think, again, for like the brand recognition. Uh, we drive a lot of our comments to Facebook. I mean, uh, 
reviews, like client reviews to yeah. Facebook. So we don't use Zillow all that much. I know that a lot of like realtors fish for like reviews on Zillow. Um, but we drive a lot of our clients to both Google and to Facebook. Um, so that's pretty much the primary purpose right there. I think there is power in numbers again on Facebook and like business page likes too. So like been working on that too, but again, it's not our core focus. Um, I think overall, like your personal page definitely gets a lot more exposure. Like for me, when we share our, um, like listing photos, like they get more exposure and interaction, like on my personal page than they do the business page, but to keep up with things like keep up with the challenges more or less. Right. You need to keep them on, we keep them on our business Facebook page as well. And like, oftentimes, like I'll just share what our business page has and just like click the share button. And oftentimes it goes into like my personal account. Um, but I think like personal pages, like my opinion is that you get more activity and exposure on your personal page. But if you have a brand that you're working towards, like it's good to have a Facebook page as well. But again, only if you're going to use it, like we absolutely positively use ours. So right. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions real quick? Great. All right. Well, thank you, Brittany. We appreciate it. Hopefully everybody got a little tidbit out of uh, what you presented. And if you can actually email me that link and I'll send yeah. that out to everybody. Um, For sure. So, all right. Thank Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Hang. <laughs> Thanks, Brittany. We appreciate Bye. you.